All right, welcome back to another edition of Financial Accounting. So we need to talk about what to expect in the days ahead. So per our schedule, we are here on Wednesday, February 3rd. We've got our exam on Friday. Exam Midterm exams are held during normal class times. You do not need to go to Zoom. In fact, you cannot take your exam on Zoom. When you go when you go to class on Friday, you won't go to Zoom. You'll just go to Blackboard during normal class time, and you'll go to this part of Blackboard where it says Exam 1. That is where your midterm exam is held, along with all of your other midterm exams and your final exam. When you go in there, you will see Exam 1 for credit, remotely proctored. That will be available to you during your normally scheduled class time. You take your exam during class time. So if you're registered at the 12 o'clock section at 006, at noon, you need to be on Blackboard ready to take your exam. You must start this exam within the first five minutes of your class time. If you don't, I reserve the right to not allow you to take the exam. That's just to be fair to everybody. It's no... Um, it's not meant to be uh, critical about you or your timeliness. You need to start your exam on time. So make sure that you know when your exam starts and that you're ready on Blackboard to take it. Once you click inside there, realize that you will have to show your ID to the camera, just as you did for the Proctorio test run assignment, and do a 360 degree scan of the room as well as show your desktop environment. All those things are explained in more detail in the um, exam one review notes. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Just make sure that when you go into your exam, if you are prompted for a password, realize there is no password required to get into the exam. You may get a password screen. If you do, there's something wrong on your side. You need to fix it. One way to take care of that is to click on the refresh button on Google Chrome. Either that or exit out of Chrome completely, go back into it, go back into Blackboard, and start your exam all over again. If you're still running into technical difficulties, you must use the technical issues guide to resolve it on your end. Your technical issues are your responsibility to solve, so that means you have to call up Proctorio support, so be it. But realize that there's nothing I can do on my end other than just check to make sure that you're actually taking your exam during your regularly scheduled exam time. That's what you will do to get your exam done. <clears throat> One thing to mention is that when you go into um, a proctored Blackboard exam, you will have below quiz tools a button for um, an on-screen calculator. You're not allowed to use a calculator, so you must use the on-screen calculator. Let's go back to the home page and go into exam one information folder. There you will see the set of review notes for exam one. I provide this for everybody at every for every single exam. We'll go through those in a second. Below you'll see a practice exam uh, for a practice exam without Proctorio and a practice exam with Proctorio. I strongly recommend you do the one the practice exam with Proctorio at least once to make sure that you have all the technical requirements taken care of to in order to take your actual exam. Realize that practice exams are just a way to, to see, to give you feedback as to how well you know the material. They should not be the only thing that you look at or review to prepare yourself for the exam. The primary focus, what you should be spending most time on, is your homework. Reviewing your homework, making sure you understand what you did and why, as well as making sure that all of your class notes are filled in, that you're reviewing them so you understand what's going on, and refer back to your text note, textbook for any um, other type of information you may be missing. When you go into the review notes, you will see for exam one a, a set of instructions that you must follow. So all of our exams are taken on Blackboard. Proctorio is monitoring it, so make sure your camera is on as well as your microphone. It is similar to your test run assignment. So you should have by now um, all completed your Proctorio test run assignment. That was homework. You're required to do that primarily to make sure that you understand what is required in the course, throughout the course, as well as make sure that you actually have Proctorio set up on your computer and you're ready to take the exam. 
Technical, uh, technological capabilities are your responsibility. So if you are not checking to make sure that you have Google Chrome as your browser and that Proctorio is installed, you're going to run into trouble that is your responsibility to fix. No personal calculators are permitted on the exam. There is an on-screen calculator. Like I said, you access it via quiz tools. See the image below. You're permitted one piece of scratch paper. That piece of paper is no bigger than eight and a half by 11, which is a standard size notebook piece of paper or a standard size piece of uh, letter, letter size printer paper, eight and a half by 11. Um, as a tedious sort of requirement, you're required to label the front page one and the back bank back page two. My apologies for my typos here. Label the front one, label the two back, make sure it's blank. You must show your scratch paper at the beginning of the exam. Show that it's blank on both sides. Do that after you've done your room scan before you take your exam. If you don't do that, I will address you personally and see what corrective action needs to be taken. Hold your scratch hold on to your scratch paper after you're done with your exam. It'll be useful when you want to review your exam with me. Each midterm exam is uh, allocated 60 minutes uh, for, for the standard exam time. There are 21 questions and they're all multiple choice. They're not fill in the blank. They're not true false. They're all multiple choice. 21 questions worth three points each. So it's possible to get 63 out of 60 or 105%. So every single midterm exam you take in this class, it is possible that you are given extra credit. Generally, I put that in there because there's usually one question that always kind of throws people off because of the wording. Realize I don't have control over the questions. I can only offer you guidance on how best to answer those questions when you're given something that seems a bit confusing. There are no makeup exams, except in extreme emergencies. So you must show up on time to your exam during normal, normally scheduled class time. Technological issues do not warrant makeup exams, and those include things like being kicked out of Blackboard because an application popped up on your computer, or being kicked out of Blackboard because your phone rang. You need to make sure that there's no distractions, that your phone does not um, disrupt your computing environment in which you're taking on which you're taking your exam. Um, you need to make sure that there's you have strong internet connection, that there's, if you have some sort of um, blackout issues or for whatever reason, your electricity gets cut off during your exam, realize there's nothing for me to do about that. You need to make sure that you have strong internet connection, you won't be kicked off, and your environment is quiet and you're able to focus. Um, take the practice exam with Proctorio on Blackboard. That's my recommendation. Do that uh, at least once prior to the exam to make sure you have all the technological capabilities to take the exam. All the material from your textbook, the lectures, our homework, are testable. The content of this first exam covers chapters one and two. In fact, every midterm exam covers only two chapters worth of material. But make no mistake about it, the material is stacked over time. You have to remember the material from previous chapters in order to understand how to do understand the material in future chapters. Keep in mind this also is that our final exam is comprehensive. So you do not want to look at any exam in isolation from one another. They're not mutually exclusive. They're all related to each other. The first exam tends to be the easiest for people because it's mostly conceptual. There's very little, not very little. There's not as much computation or mathematical uh, difficulties with the problems given to you. Analysis and computations will happen later in the term on future exams. Like I said, generally speaking, people find the first exam uh, the easiest among all the exams in Accounting 2300. What you need to realize is, <clears throat> especially for exam three, that you're given 60 minutes to do the exam. Utilize that time effectively. If you have extra time at the end, go back and review your answers. We're going to cover uh, the exam covers learning objectives one, two, three, and four for chapter one, and one, two, three, four, five for chapter two. There are the number of questions broken out by a learning objective are there and available for you to review. Um, one thing to note is that learning objective 2.5 has four questions allocated to it. So um, I recommend going back and reviewing all your notes for learning objective 2.5 if that if that particular learning objective was difficult for you. Tips and recommendations. These don't change too much. So you want to review all of your homework. That's the first thing I recommend you do. 
realize that accounting is something you have to practice, not just something you memorize. So your homework is where you practice everything. If you haven't been doing your homework, you're not in the best position to be successful in this exam. When you're reviewing your homework, the most important thing to ask yourself is why the answers make sense. If you're relying heavily on the help me solve this feature or any of the question help features, you're not giving yourself the best chance to learn the material and you're not setting yourself up for the best chance of success on the exams. Make sure you're also focusing on processes that help you derive answers. Journal entries, posting to the ledger, things like that. Those are key aspects of what this class is all about. So you need to understand the process, how things are actually done in the specific steps that they're done. Memorization will not be enough. That was something I emphasized from day one of this class. So you need to make sure that you're able to, to apply the material. Don't just be ready to demonstrate your knowledge of the material. Review all the lecture notes. Be sure that all of your lecture notes have the blanks completed. If not, go back and review the lecture notes for any potential blanks that you missed. I don't provide completed sets of lecture notes. It's your responsibility to get in class and or through the, le the recorded, lecture, recorded lecture videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is additional help on practice on my accounting lab, and we can take a look at that really quick. The questions that I put up on my accounting lab are not bonus questions. They're not for credit of any kind. They're just there to give you more practice answering questions. So when you go into the assignments, <clears throat> you will see towards the bottom practice questions for uh, exam one. Again, these are not for credit. This is essentially a practice quiz that contains all multiple choice questions. Your exam is all multiple choice. So I figure the best thing to do is to give you more practice and answering multiple choice questions. More conditioning, the better. Take the practice exam on Blackboard multiple times, but realize that about after the third time, you'll, you'll start to memorize the answers and the questions, so it becomes relatively ineffective. Don't just solely focus on the practice exams. Look at all the material. I cannot emphasize it enough. Uh, you have as many iterations as you want to, but again, Realize that you should at least try the practice exam with Proctorio at least once. When taking the exam, make sure that you pay attention to your time. Usually up in the top left hand, somewhere up in the top of your exam will be a timer. So you're able to sort of monitor, see how much time you have left. Read the questions carefully. Read them slowly. Reread them. Pay attention to dates. All details in the problems matter in this class. Sometimes I give you too much information. You have to know to ignore that information. But I give you just enough information to solve the problems. Read them slowly. When you are reading through the problems, I recommend you sketch out the information as you read it. Utilize your scratch paper. That, that's what it's there for. Write down facts. Draw pictures. Draw timelines. Anything to help you focus in on what the most crucial information is and what to do with it. Write out, sketch out some potential solutions. Draw journal entries, draw T-account entries, whatever it may take. Keep Remember, you want to keep this practice exam because those processes for, that you use to help solve problems are a talking point for you and I when we go back and review your exam. Know any questions that caused you trouble in particular. I want to know about those. Know any thoughts, including justifications for why you answered questions a certain way. I definitely want to know about that. Realize that the exam is just a checkpoint for you and I. I encourage you to meet with me to go over your exam virtually. Um, or if you want to just know the sort of the concepts and topics that you missed, I'm happy to provide the information to you. When we meet virtually, um, we can discuss any questions that took you a long time or confusing that you missed. We can discuss ways to improve your test taking performance. I'm happy to uh, talk to you about how to uh, do well on future exams and how you can help me improve upon uh, asking you questions on future exams. Feedback goes both ways, folks. I want you to tell me what you thought. If you thought the exam was not fair, I would like to hear that from you directly. and We can talk about things that either you or I can do to improve. Exams are not a do or die type of situation. Most people get test anxiety because they think, oh, if I fail the exam, it's, my life is over. They're not. They're a checkpoint. They're a way to see whether or not you're doing things correctly. If you're getting 40, 50% on the exams, guess what? You're probably not doing things right. You need to talk to me. Um, they're not a judgment about you or your abilities. So realize when you come and talk to me, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not here to judge you or make you feel bad. I'm here to help you succeed. That's what my job is. Uh, the exams are simply assessment of your knowledge and understanding of the material to date. If you're falling behind, 
I might reach out to you and ask you if you need any help. Make sure you reply to my emails if I do that. Uh, it's a little mantra. I like to put this in on the review notes. Accounting is an ing word. It's a verb. Accounting is like throwing a spiral or shooting a layup or spiking a volleyball or swinging a golf club. To become good at accounting, you have to practice using the tools. That's why homework problems take so long. I know that they, for some people, it's a problematic part of uh, this class is doing the homework, but realize the homework is there for your benefit. It's not there to uh, make you drown, to have you drown in all of the curriculum. You want to use it appropriately. You want to make sure that it's a tool to help you learn and practice. Hammers on nails, drivers on screws. You need to practice this stuff in order to do it. If I gave you a handful of, of nails and I told you to spike them into a board, it may take you a few times to kind of get the hang of it, right? You might kink a few nails the first time you strike on them, strike them with a hammer. But after a while, you'll get the hang of it. You'll become better at nailing nails into wood. That's just what practice is all about. So accounting is critical in that area. If you don't believe me, I understand. Realize that it's your success that I'm mostly concerned with. Um, so if you need help down the road, I'm always there for you. Characteristics of, or questions that often uh, cause people frustrations on the exam, on this first exam. Characteristics of financial reporting, fundamental versus enhancing characteristics. So we talked about VUCT and R, F and R. Go back and take a look at those in your notes. Assumptions and principles like the cost, the historical cost principle or the um, entity assumption. Definitions of accounting uh, concepts, anything that's bolded in your text, you should have that written down someplace. Not just because you want to do well on the exam, but because we're going to use these phrases and these words over and over and over in the course. If you don't understand them, if you don't get them right now, um, it's going to be make, uh, learning the material later down the road much more difficult. So make sure you're understanding and familiar with terminology. Make sure you know how to analyze the effects of a transaction. Know how uh, transactions affect the uh, accounts and account balances. How do how when we receive cash? What does that happen? What happens to the cash account when we earn revenue? What happens to the revenue account when we pay or receive on accounts? What does that mean? Okay, know your debits and credits, folks. This is crucial throughout the entire term. We're going to be doing nothing but debits and credits in this class. So as we go through and you're introduced to new accounts and how to debit and credit them, you're going to want to make note of that. Make sure you know how transa transactions affect the accounting equation. Sometimes we use cash to get a new asset, in which case there's overall no effect on the accounting equation. Sometimes we sell goods on accounts. So we perform services where we sell goods, we earn revenue, the equity goes up, and our assets go up. Sometimes you see just a left side effect, sometimes you see a right side effect only. Um, we went through a lot of practice problems in class, so go back and look at accounting equation impacts. Uh, how transactions affect the financial statements, the totals and the subtotals. Remember that uh, the current, remember that assets and liabilities are broken out between current and long term or current and non current. So current assets and current liabilities are a subtotal that we would see on the balance sheet versus total assets and total liabilities, which includes everything. How transactions of uh, transaction effects are recorded. Make sure you know journal entries. Make sure you know how that information is posted to the ledger. We went through several examples of that. Um, how is the information from the ledger summarized in the trial balance? Go back and do look at, take a look at that. Um, how does the trial balance help us pr prepare the income statement, the balance sheet, etc.? Uh, we went through a lot of examples, but you, more importantly, you had homework that helped you with this. So realize I'm not going to throw you any curveballs. I'm going to keep it as straightforward as possible. Trust that you have done this in some capacity over the past two weeks. Financial statements. Understand the content, the format, revenues, then expenses, beginning retained earnings, plus net income, minus dividends. What's on those financial statements? Where can I find things? What accounts appear on the different financial statements? Realize that what you've seen so far in terms of accounts and line items and financial statements are very small compared to what we will cover. The financial statements get very complicated. Um, we potentially will go through uh, a good three or four dozen different accounts throughout this entire term. So you want to make sure that you're keeping track of all these different accounts um, in, in your notes someplace. Those are all the notes I have for this particular review session. 
uh, um, as we progress, these notes will get longer because exams become more dense and more detailed. So you just want to make sure that you're sticking with your reading, getting the homework done, showing up to class, and asking me questions as you go. Let me know if you have any more questions.